I'm going to share some Power BI best practices with you because I want you to look like the Power BI rock star that you are. So here, my friends, are the top five rookie mistakes you don't want to make. Now, I would like to know which one of these is your favorite. So leave that in the comments below. Or if you have a new one for me, I would like to know that as well. So just add that in the comments. Now, if you want to become a Power BI Pro, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you're notified whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions to make you a superstar. I'll also be there at the upcoming Microsoft Power BI Summit. Well, that's what I'm calling it. So fine, the Business Application Summit, and I'm gonna have not one, not two, but three sessions I'll be presenting. So come out, check out my sessions, and if you see me there, uh, give me a high five or give me a hug, and I would love to see you there. So let's get started, my friends. The number one rookie mistake, not focusing on the relationships. It's all about the relationships, isn't it? So what am I talking about? Now, whether I'm working with a client or one of my students, pretty much the first thing that I ask them to show me when they pose a question around a model, it's like, stop, stop, stop. Show me the relationship view because it tells me so much of what's going on and whether I'm dealing with a rookie or a pro. So often I, I see this rookie move where all they have is a big, wide, flattened table and I know I'm dealing with a rookie. On the other hand, if I see this, that's probably also a sign of a rookie. So this is where somebody has taken all the tables in their data warehouse, just connected to all of it, brought it all in, and let the relationships be auto-detected. So I see this, this mess of tables, and not just that, I see a lot of dotted lines, I see a lot of uh, you know, bi-directional relationships, which they cannot quickly explain as to why they have designed it that way because they haven't done any design. Now this is a, a slightly better, this is a step above the rookie maybe, where they have cleaned up everything and brought in a, a very clean model, but in, in some terminology, the approach that we use for building a Power BI model is called a star schema, but these uh, you know, next step from rookies have taken that star word too seriously and they try to arrange it in a star shape. Now this is when I know I'm dealing with a pro. So here we have a very clean model. They have a very clear understanding of what their data tables are, which represent the business processes, and they have the lookup tables aligned at the top. So data tables at the bottom and lookup tables at the top. And the lookup tables are the who, what, where, when, how. So I know this is a, uh, uh, this is a pro I'm dealing with because they're following the best practice to keep a clean, relationship view and build a clean model. If you would like to learn more about uh, data modeling in Power BI, then click the link shown here or down in the comments, down in the description, sorry. All right, let's go on to number two rookie mistake using the same old names. So this is maybe a sign of laziness or maybe they're just rookies, right? So I, I look at their model and now I'm not looking at, at the shape, I'm looking at the content inside. I'm looking at the table names and column names. And when I see something like this, which come, which seems straight out of whatever names they had in the source. And sometimes, a lot of times these source systems don't have names which make sense to the business user, which belong on a business report. And it's just some weird weirdness going on. So first of all, of course, as I talked about in the modeling, that instead of just pulling everything in, a good Power BI Pro would be very selective in what they pull into the model. They will be selective about the tables they bring in, they will be selective about the columns they bring in. But beyond that, the naming is important, my friends, and that's what differentiates a rookie from a pro. So get rid of any weird uh, prefixes or suffixes. Uh, sometimes data warehouses, they love uh, putting that dim and fact. That, those don't make sense, please get rid of them. And, and sometimes they have really weird column names like English month name. Come on, let's just call it month, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's what would make sense to a business user. So look at it from the perspective of, of a business user and from business reports, what belongs there. Number three rookie mistake, you gotta mind your table manners, my, my friend. Elbows off the table, right? No, that's not what we're talking about. So. If I go a little bit deeper and I start looking at their DAX measures, and if I see something like this, ooh, I know I'm dealing with a rookie. So if I see a reference in their DAX measures to a column which does not have the table name next to it, or reference to a measure which does have a table name next to it, that's not a pro move, my friend. A pro follows this best practice that columns always have table column. That's how they reference. And measures, you never put the table name in there. So let me show you an example. So look at this formula. And if I'm looking at this, 
I'm looking at sales amount and I know right away that that's a measure. And if I'm looking at profit percentage, that's reference as table column. I know that's a column and that's very important as you go along in this journey and you want to go from rookie to pro. Number four is actually a rookie move, but this was a great segue from the last one. And this is if I see their measures or wait, I totally messed that up. Number four is a pro move, not a rookie move. And but the, and it is a great segue from the last one. So if I'm looking at the measures and I see their measures organized in measure folders, ooh boy, that's a pro move for sure. Now this is really easy to do. All you have to do is create a new separate table and you go to your measures and you change the home table and you place them in these. And you're not restricted to just having one measure folder. You can have multiple and organize your measures as you desire. Number five rookie mistake, not managing by exception. What the heck does that mean? Now, uh, stay with me for this one because this one is 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 slightly subtle, all right? But, uh, uh, but you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So in this scenario, and this is pretty common throughout, right? So you have a standard lookup table, right? With, which has a hierarchy, some sort of some sort of level. So you can have in finance data, you can have like a cost center or account center hierarchy, they roll up to something or a sales territory hierarchy, right? I mean, which territory like, uh, you know, Northwest belongs in US or something like that, uh, a department hierarchy or organization hierarchy. So you have that. And in this case, the example that I'm going to use you, we, uh, I'm going to show you, is the product hierarchy. And this is very simple in this case. There's a product name, there's subcategory and category, right? But typically when we have something like this, you know, you have business, IT, gosh, whatever is stored in the standard system, business always moves fast, right? It's always moving on. So sometimes you have some exceptions, which are like, no, 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 that's, that's not... Uh, how it is uh, 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 right now, maybe there's been a reorg or something like that, or a change that is not reflected, or that maybe is just not how you want the data to be presented, right? So there are a lot of scenarios where there are a few exceptions, but here's what happens. Now, in this case, you, you would notice at the bottom, it says this has 606 rows, but who knows? And if you look in the product table or something else, cost and center hierarchy, this can be tens of thousands of rows, right? But it's a lookup table with a hierarchy and you need to make a few changes. But what a rookie would do, not, not you, not you, I'm talking about those other people, is they would make a copy of that entire table from typically their SQL server or whatever warehouse they're connecting to and stick that in Excel rookie move, my friends. So they will get a copy of that and then they will go in there and tinker and, oh, oh, I fixed it. Well, you fixed it for now, but my friend, you've created a monster, monster. So what's going to happen next? This is problematic because any updates that happen in, in the system, the standard table are not going to be automatically showed up in your manual table, would they? So if any new rows that get added, any data that is relevant that gets changed, none of that is going to be reflected. And now this is going to become, yeah, a ball and chain around it. I mean, I have met departments where there was somebody designated to maintain these tables. Oh, oh yeah, the cost and hierarchy. Yeah, talk to Joe. Yeah, he, he, he keeps that in his Excel sheet. He has it all down. And I'm like, oh my gosh, God help Joe. Right, so don't do that, my friend. Instead, adopt the pro move, which is you use the standard table, but in your manual table, you only keep the exceptions. So if there are only two rows or five rows or 10 rows, doesn't matter. If only those are the ones that need to be changed, you manage that with an exception table, but then using the power of Power BI, you're gonna merge that so that you take the standard table and then overlay your overriding mappings on it and that is a pro move my friend so hey if you like that subscribe and click the bell and leave me a comment on which one is your favorite until next time power on my friend hey keep watching more videos and keep learning power bi but if you did enjoy this video i would love to hear from you so leave a comment like subscribe all the good stuff power on my friends